All right. Hello. Thank you for joining the CTR coding break on the topic of hemopoietic transformations. Our objectives today include why hemopoietic transformations occur, the difference between transformations to and transformations from, a review of the multiple primary rules, and a few case examples. Hemopoietic malignancies are cancers of the blood-forming cells, while hemopoietic neoplasms encompass a wide range of blood disorders. Any cell can undergo a mutation that leads to a dysfunctional or malignant cell instead of a healthy cell. Depending on what stage of differentiation the cell is in when it makes the transformation, this will generate different types of disorders such as myeloproliferative disorders, leukemias, lymphomas, and myelomas. Abnormal younger cells are referred to as blasts, and these can suggest the cancer transformation occurred in a blood-forming cell that was at an earlier stage of development. If the cells are more mature, then this suggests the transformation happened to a more mature cell. Let's look at transformations to and transformations from. A chronic neoplasm can transform to an acute neoplasm, which is more severe. We will know if chronic can transform to acute by looking in the transformations to section in the heme database. The most common form of transformation is when a, tr is when a neoplasm progresses from chronic to acute. Next, we have an acute neoplasm transforming to a chronic neoplasm, and these are found in the transformations from section in the heme database. Neoplasms may be diagnosed in an acute phase and transform to a lesser aggressive chronic phase after treatment. The inclusion of the terms chronic and acute did not mean the neoplasm may transform. These terms refer to the indolent or aggressive nature of the neoplasm. Multiple primary rules M8 through M14 in the manual discuss heme transformations. The general instructions say to start with M1 for each case, so we shouldn't skip to rule M8 if we, ha if we think we have a transformation case. There is a 21 days rule, and it is mentioned in rules M8 through M12. M rule M8 and M9 apply to a case if the patient was diagnosed with a chronic and acute neoplasm either simultaneously or within 21 days. Rule M8 applies if there is documentation on only one positive biopsy, and Rule M9 applies if there is not documentation on any biopsy. Also, Rule M9 states that the later diagnosis could either be the chronic or the acute neoplasm, and note one in that rule tells us that the two diagnoses are likely, likely the result of an ongoing diagnostic workup. So if rule M8 and M9 do not apply, then we look at rule M10, which tells us to abstract multiple primaries. This is the first rule we see that talks about the two neoplasms being more than 21 days apart instead of within 21 days. If the case has a presence of multiple plasmacytomas, this is a diagnosis of multiple myeloma, and the heme database goes into further detail. So going further, rule M11 is within 21 days, but it tells us to abstract multiple primaries because there is a positive biopsy confirming the chronic neoplasm and another confirming the acute neoplasm. For rule M12 and M13, Treatment is a factor. It is important to determine if the patient received treatment for the acute neoplasm. If the patient was treated, then rule M13 applies, and we will abstract the chronic neoplasm as the second primary. But if the patient was not treated for the acute neoplasm, then rule M12 would apply first, and we only code the acute neoplasm. The last rule pertaining to transformations is rule M14, which tells us to abstract a single primary when post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorder is diagnosed simultaneously with any B-cell lymphoma, T-cell lymphoma, Hodgkin lymphoma, or plasmacytoma slash myeloma. 
This is a change from previous instructions. As of 2021, post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorder without an associated lymphoma or plasma cytoma is a behavior code of one and is no longer reportable. So with that, let's take a look at a few case examples. Eighty-eight-year-old patient presented with symptoms of fatigue and weight loss along with iron deficiency and CBC shows 13% circulating glass. 1122 bone marrow biopsy showed a high-grade myeloid neoplasm with 17% blasts on aspirate smears, and the comment stated myeloid dysplastic syndrome with excess blast 2, which may be transforming to an acute myeloid leukemia. 4 1522 bone marrow biopsy showed acute myeloid leukemia with myeloid dysplastic related changes. And 5 1522 oncology note stated MDS now transformed to AML. When working through this case or cases, our first step is to determine the working histologies. The HEME manual tells us to use the HEME database to identify the working histologies. The database show myeloid dysplastic syndrome with excess blast is morphology code 9983-3, and AML with myeloid dysplastic related changes has a morphology code of 9895-3. Step two says to use the multiple primary rules to determine the number of primaries using these working histology codes. So after moving through the rules, we would stop at rule M10. If we wanted to know for sure, we are instructed to use the database again to check the transformations to and transformations from sections. The HEME database says that MDS transforms to AML, and that means MDS is the chronic neoplasm, while AML is the acute neoplasm, and they are diagnosed more than 21 days apart. For case example number two, we have a 70-year-old male presented with facial swelling for six days. 10 1521 CT showed six centimeter aggressive soft tissue mass. Left maxillary sinus appears solid and consistent with follicular lymphoma along with an aggressive adjuvant cavity, left frontal sinus, left nasopharynx and oropharynx with mild left neck adenopathy. 10, 26, 21, ENT and oncology notes states left nasal mass consistent with follicular lymphoma. And then on 11, 1, 21, there was a left soft palate and left sinus biopsies. Both showed diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. The bone, mal, bone marrow biopsy was negative. In our case example, we saw follicular lymphoma and diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. If we skipped the multiple primary rules in the heme manual and went straight to the heme calculator, the result would tell us to abstract a new primary for the diffuse large B-cell. However, going to the heme database to use what we have and then going to the rules are the correct steps. The heme database tells us the histology codes and the follicular lymphoma is a chronic neoplasm while diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is an acute neoplasm. Both neoplasms are within 21 days of each other with documentation on only one positive biopsy. So rule M8 applies to our case. Rule M8 note one says that when these diagnoses happen within 21 days, it is most likely that one diagnosis was provisional and the biopsy identified the correct diagnosis. So then we would abstract the acute neoplasm. I wanted to provide a what-if scenario as well. If both of these histologies found in the same one biopsy with no other biopsies, we would have stopped at rule M4 because they were both non-Hodgkin lymphoma in the same location in the same biopsy. Here is our last case example. 70-year-old patient complained of back pain for two months. 11, 10, 20, MRI and CT showed multifocal osseous lesions, likely 
multiple myeloma, or MET. 11-15-22, biopsy of soft tissue epidural mass showed large cell lymphoma with the addendum showed diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. 12-15-20, bone marrow biopsy showed low-grade B-cell lymphoma. And then the 1-15-21 oncology note stated diffuse large B-cell and patient started RCHOP with plans for radiation. Then a 7121 bone marrow biopsy showed chronic lymphocytic leukemia. First, we will look at the heme database to see what we have. Diffuse large B cell shows no transformations to, which means it is an acute neoplasm and transforms a chronic neoplasm. Once the patient received treatment and was retested, there was no evidence of diffuse large B cell. However, there was evidence of chronic, less aggressive neoplasm of CLL. So we will stop at rule M13 and abstract multiple primaries because we have an originally diagnosed acute neoplasm that reverted back to a chronic neoplasm after treatment. And this wraps up the CTR coding break. So thank you for joining me today and registry partners.